Hey guys, Levelcap here and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. This virtual private network provider offers the fastest speeds. They have servers in 94 different countries and 24 seven customer support. Now, why should you use a VPN? Well, it gives you privacy from your internet service provider, your cell phone provider, ad companies, and even hackers. You can also get access to movies or shows that are only available in other countries. I was able to watch some of my favorite TV shows that hadn't yet come out in the US, which was kind of cool. ExpressVPN is available on Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, routers, and even more. We use our cell phones every day on different Wi-Fi networks, and many people can get access to our information if it's not properly secured. Using ExpressVPN on your mobile device will give you that extra layer of privacy and security. You can try out ExpressVPN for less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box, expressvpn.com slash level cap. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash level cap for three months free with a one year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash level cap to learn more. Take back your internet privacy today. Battlefield 5's latest content update is here. It adds a new grand operation, the Battle of Hanu, complete with a nighttime version of Panzer Storm and 64 player rush. The more traditional 32 player rush will also be available in a limited time mode. Overall, I really enjoyed the new operation. I wasn't very excited for a night variant of Panzerstorm, but after having played it, I think it's actually pretty good. With Rush coming back into the mix, the Battle of Hanu feels like the first classic Battlefield map experience in Battlefield 5. It's certainly not perfect though. Infantry players get absolutely smacked around by tanks in many areas of this operation, and the tank combat in general doesn't feel, feel particularly well balanced. The Battlefield community seems pretty eager for new maps as well. The Battle Royale mode Firestorm launches next month alongside a multiplayer map in Greece. So technically we're getting two new maps next month, but one of them is exclusive to Firestorm. Hopefully DICE will keep adding variants of existing maps that support new modes to keep things fresh between releases. If you want my full thoughts, be sure to check out the video covering the new update. Apex Legends got a new gun this week, the Havoc, an energy ammo assault rifle. It's the first weapon to utilize two hop-ups. With the select fire hop-up, you can switch to a charge shot that does big damage and basically has no bullet drop or travel time. The turbocharger hop-up decreases the Havoc's spin-up time and bumps the select fire rate a bit. Overall, it's a reliable alternative to other rifles like the Flatline and Hemlock, which have comparable damage but slow fire rates. Guns like the R301 and Peacekeeper still reign supreme thanks to their utility and more common ammo types. The game's first new content drops next month and is rumored to include two new legends, Octane and Watson. Octane has a Stimpak ability, which is likely similar to Titanfall 2's, giving him a short speed boost. Watson has the Tesla Trap. It sounds like something similar to Caustic's Gas Traps in that it zaps nearby enemies with electricity. Several other potential legend names are floating around in the game files, but it seems likely that Octane and Watson will release with Season 1's content in March. Twitch Prime members also got a new skin and five loot crates this week, though the same content could be unlocked on PC via a command in the game's launch properties. The recent addition of loot boxes to Black Ops 4 has drawn the ire of its players. Before the game's launch, the design director said that new specialists, basically the game's class-based characters, would only be locked behind missions, not paywalls. Unfortunately, new specialists have been added that are exclusive to the loot box system. However, this isn't the main point of concern for upset players though. Black Ops 4 is a $60 game with a $50 season pass, paid microtransactions, a paid battle pass with levels that can also be paid for, and now loot crates. The game's monetization is just impossible to escape at this point. That's frustrating for players who just want to play and unlock new content without having to shell out money for stuff in a game they already paid for multiple times over. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds 26th update has made flare guns a permanent item in the game. 
It can be used to call in care packages or armored vehicles. Flare guns were initially introduced in limited time game modes shortly after the game's 1.0 launch. They've come and gone since then, but are now in the game for the foreseeable future. Two new vehicles were also added, the Snowbike and the Vikendi exclusive Zima, a replacement for the UAZ. A bug that made your in-game FPS affect weapons rate of fire has a potential fix in the works. And while update 26 was on the game's test server, the rate of fire fix was implemented. It hasn't made its way to the live servers though. Hopefully it'll be added soon. A bunch of other tweaks and fixes were also made. Be sure to check the full patch notes linked in the description. The upcoming co-op zombie shooter World War Z has fallen into the Epic Store pit of controversy this week as they announced a price drop from $40 to $35. The game was announced as an Epic Store exclusive in December, much to the disappointment of the people excited for the game. The recent price drop was announced in a statement released by the studio's CEO. In it, he said that being exclusive to the Epic Games Store is the best deal for players and developers, citing the high cost of game development in Epic's more attractive 88% revenue split versus Steam's 70% split. With the difference in revenue splits and discounts, they're technically passing 10% of the savings on to customers. So they're not wrong about the money, but it does appear that most critics of the Epic exclusives are just annoyed that they have to deal with yet another game client. And the Epic Game Store isn't particularly great when it comes to client reliability, preloading, and other features. So until Steam really matches the revenue split with some of their AAA developers, we're going to start seeing a lot of other titles going to other platforms. The latest map for Overwatch, Paris, is now available. It features the assault game mode and a playable piano that was a big source of entertainment while the map was available on the game's test server. PlayStation 4 owners that pre-ordered Overkill's The Walking Dead reported their orders have been refunded this week due to, as Sony described, the game being cancelled. The developer has since clarified the port isn't cancelled, just postponed. The game is currently available on PC. The developer's parent company, Starbreeze, is currently negotiating an extension of their bankruptcy avoidance period with the Swedish government. They lost $135 million in 2018 due to poor sales of the Walking Dead game and apparently mismanagement of the company. This combined with potential bankruptcy has cast a massive shadow of doubt on the company for customers. Gaming hardware maker Razer is cutting 30 jobs, mostly from its mobile division. Razer recently closed its game store as part of a wider refocusing of the company. People that bought games via Razer store won't lose access and pre-order customers have their orders fulfilled. The shutdown happens on the 28th. EA is reportedly laying off at least 40 people and potentially as much as 200 people at its Australian mobile game studio, Fire Monkeys. The studio has been touted as Australia's largest mobile developer and has some major titles either released or, until recently, in active development. Such titles include Real Racing 4 and The Sims Mobile. Real Racing 4 has reportedly been cancelled, while development of The Sims Mobile will continue after the impact of the layoffs has been dealt with. Australia's game development industry is incredibly small. These layoffs could represent as much as 10% of the entire country's game development job pool. And while it's not on the same scale as Activision Blizzard's recently 800 employee layoffs, it's still a big blow to the local development scene in Australia. ArenaNet employees are bracing for an impending round of layoffs. The company currently employs around 400 people. Exactly how many people will lose their jobs hasn't been announced. This follows the disappointing sales of the company's Guild Wars series. ArenaNet's parent company, NCSoft, is apparently making less money than it's spending. They actually closed the entire studio responsible for the failed MMO Wildstar. ArenaNet's publishing division is being absorbed by NCSoft, hence the layoffs. Anthem's launch has received a lukewarm reception thanks to a lack of content and general performance issues. It launched with a day one patch that did address some issues like load times but introduced new performance issues and bugs. Bioware have been clear that Anthem's endgame content would be delivered post-launch, so hopefully things will improve as the game is fleshed out and its technical issues are addressed. 
Nintendo of America's president of 15 years, Reggie, is retiring. He's been a beloved member of the gaming community since he first took the stage during Nintendo's E3 conference in 2004. At the time, Nintendo was struggling to recapture people's attention thanks to weak sales of the GameCube compared to Sony's insane hit, the PlayStation 2. Reggie helped Nintendo reaffirm their position as the company that makes games for everyone. He's been the face of Nintendo in America for multiple generations of hardware and gamers. Reggie's replacement, the ironically named Doug Bowser, has been with Nintendo since 2015. He's got some big shoes to fill. In our final story this week, NVIDIA have officially launched the rumored GTX 1660 Ti. At $279, it offers 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM and performance on par or slightly better than the existing GTX 1070, which retails for roughly $400. This effectively makes it a refresh of the current GTX line with a decent price drop. That said, it's not everything people were hoping for. Both the GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti can be found used for 100 or more off their MSRP, making them very attractive to people comfortable with used hardware. The biggest thing to note though is the 1660 Ti doesn't support Nvidia's RTX features like ray tracing and DLSS. All things considered, if you have a 900 series NVIDIA GPU, the 1660 Ti is the most value-oriented upgrade you can make. Existing 10 series owners, especially those with 1070 Ti's, should be very comfortable holding off until more GPUs from both Nvidia and AMD are announced. That wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.